Welcome back to the program with me this evening, Liberal MP Craig Laundy, former Prime Ministerial Advisor for the Labor Party, Sean Kelly, News Corp columnist Miranda Devine and Labor frontbencher Ed Husey. We're going to turn our attention to the Middle East and uh, an ongoing uh, humanitarian crisis in this conflict. Um, Ed Husick, we have seen over 700 or mm. thereabouts Palestinians killed uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Navi Pillay, who's the Human Rights Commissioner with the United Nations, says that Israel might be invested, investigated for uh, war crimes. Now, this comes in the context, though, of about 100 rockets a day coming in mm. from Gaza, from Hamas. Doesn't a country have the right to protect itself like that? Absolutely. I mean, you, you hear that all the time and no one could argue against it, but does a country protect itself by uh, effectively seeing 700 Palestinians die as a result of you know, that, that uh, self-defence? Uh, uh, I think there are a number of things that, that you know, are important to touch on. One is I have this deep concern that um, really what we'll see is the, with these things reoccur, you know, these episodes reoccur, you know, 2009, 12, now we're in 14, and the question will be, will the gaps be short or long between these periods where, you know, so many people suffer? Um, and if you want to be able to break that down, then the longer term thing is, you know, finding a, a resolution. Everyone keeps talking about we, we believe in the two-state solution. Everyone does, but what's actually being done to advance it? Uh, the issue for me on two scores, one is uh, the provocation by Hamas, you know, that basically is doing the wrong thing by the Palestinians in terms of the way that they continue to fire rockets into Israel and think that this will help in terms of the establishment of the Palestinian state. And uh, the other is the continuation of settlements in areas where you think that the second state, the Palestinian state, will actually occur. The, the biggest longer term thing is to get recognition between Palestinians and Israelis that these episodes that are occurring um, you know, basically uh, push them away, further away from getting to that two state solution, that there's nothing that is enduring, long lasting and viable if they continue down this path. And uh, it was particular, and the, the reason I make that point finally is that I read this really moving and powerful story you in The Guardian. You said it today, yeah. yeah um, who lost a Palestinian, who lost three of his daughters, who said, we just can't keep doing this. We are conjoined. What hurts one hurts the yeah, other. And he made the point, this father, uh, Miranda Devine, in 2009, he lost his three daughters. Mm. And he, he said if that was the end, and hopefully the end of the, the violence, well then he, maybe he could take that sacrifice. But it's not the end, mm. and it continues. And 150 children, Palestinian children, mm. killed in the last two weeks. Mm. Uh, it's horrible. It's awful. And, uh, and no one wants to see children die in a war zone. But, you know, again, as Israel has a right to defend itself. Um, Hamas is vowed to, does not think that Israel has a right to exist. Um, as you say, 2,000 rockets, some odd in the last uh, couple of weeks, have gone from Hamas has fired into Israel. And the only reason that they haven't been, you know, Israeli children killed is because of that dome. The Iron Dome. The Iron Dome. Um, you know, these are randomly fired in. It's not even as Israel is, you know, trying to target against Hamas leadership and it also has to be said that Hamas is using hospitals and schools and disabled schools as you know the people in there as human shields so um, it, it is intractable at the moment but but Israel it should not be treated like the pariah like the oppressor when it's it's this little country um, surrounded by hostile neighbours and it is being provoked against. I, I guess the, 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 the challenge though, when you look at this situation, asymmetrical warfare, when you've got such a big loss of life on one side and, and, and still I think it's 30 Israeli soldiers that have been killed in the conflict so far in this ground operation, does it ever, does it ever pay off in the long run? Because you're building the next generation of of extremists, aren't you, mm -hmm. with, the, with the violence? Look, it, it is a vicious circle. I, I'm, I'm absolutely on a unity ticket with Ed on this. And, and the, the irony, the ultimate irony for me, you mentioned the, the three daughters, the father talking about mm -hmm. it. Some of the vision, I mean, there was a, a picture the other day, 24 people from one family killed in Palestine. I mean, you, the, a family wiped out. And the, the thing is, I, I'm, I, I'm an idealist, and, and I may be nuts because I am. I got into politics to try and help people. Um, it, 
the, the ultimate irony, we're in Ramadan right now. Oh. And, and to add Ramadan Mubarak, um, it, it, is, it is the holiest month in the Islamic calendar. You see mosques bombed and destroyed. Um, you, you know, and, and on with it. Everyone talks the two-state solution. But you know what? The, we, need, we need to do more than talk. You know, we've got Resolution 242 out of the UN, and, and that idealistic side of me, if you, if you came to my electorate today, Kieran, and whenever we poll a two-state solution and peace in, in between Palestine and Israel, it polls through the roof. Australians believe in a fair go. And the decisions we make in government, and this, this front really should be bipartisan, we need to have, you know, we need to come up with or be a part, play a part in some solution and have more than words because there are kids and, and women and, and people. And I saw the footage the other night. A, a gentleman there in a hospital told his three daughters mm, mm. that their mother had died. Yeah, I, I mean, but this is but, but the point. Break. The point that Miranda uh, makes, and and uh, that the Israeli. Uh, I've seen the messages from the Israeli Defence Force regularly over the last twenty last few days on Twitter sending out messages there have been a hundred rockets in the last 24 hours from from Gaza today 95 you know th this is a country that's living under siege and their Tel Aviv airport was shut down and uh, no international flights in they, they, they live in a permanent state of fear um, they've got a right to respond haven't they look <laughs> Reasonably, you would assume. I mean, they've got the Iron Dome. They're, they're shooting down. The, and, and Hamas, uh, you're right, and I'm with all of you. Hamas, terrorist organisation, we've known them as a country, as so. But, you know, I think our job, when you see that footage, our job, and, and Egypt are going to play a key role here, is to is to get people to the table. And you, I'm, I keep saying we need a long-lasting a long, a long lasting solution. Well, if you look at the catalyst... To, yeah, sorry. I was just going to make a point. We, we, we need to move... We need to shift the way this conversation is held. Um, I, I agree, uh, Miranda, in terms of your point about you can't make Israel out to be the pariah. But at the same time, too, you know, we need to have both sides accepting and being a lot more accountable and responsible. Certainly on the Palestinian side, we, we have to there has to be recognition that Hamas is not doing things that are in the longer term interest of Palestinians who no, seek their own state. And, right. and at the same time too, you know, Israel, we, we can't have a situation where 700 people have died and think that that won't... I think you made this reflection a few moments ago, it's setting up the next generation of extremists. Mm -hmm, yeah. So there has to be this acceptance of, of responsibility, accountability of moving, moving, moving this debate, this conversation yeah. out of where it's at. And Miranda, the issue, uh, I guess, for the Israel Israelis as well, and, and this is why they're so reticent about having any sort of ground operation, whether it be in Gaza or southern Lebanon, anywhere in that region. They've now lost 30 soldiers. This, the catalyst for this was the loss of three students. They've now lost 30 soldiers. It, it, again, getting bogged down in this conflict, it just means more loss of life on both sides, doesn't it? it, it look, it does, and, and you would wish that that weren't the case. But um, again, I, I've been in uh, the border town of uh, Sderot, which is uh, less than a kilometre from Gaza, and you know, since 2007, pretty much, they have had daily bombardments by rockets. And you know, it's as much a psychological warfare. I think 15 Israelis have died in that time. Um, so it's it's they're constantly under siege, and it's. Uh, you know, a sort of a pretense of the UN to say, well, because Israel is so much better armed and because there is that mismatch in, uh, you know, against Hamas and their rockets, that um, that somehow Israel needs to show so much restraint that, in fact, it disempowers itself and makes itself open. And it's not just the rockets. You know, there was a story in the Wall Street Journal about uh, the tunnels. The tunnels are the new problem. Um, you, you've got lots of, uh, you know, Hamas and terrorists coming out and, and there are couple the other day that were found with um, handcuffs and chloroform or something, you know, for, for taking hostages. So, the, you know, it is, a, it is, it is, Israel is under siege yeah. and I, I don't know what you expect, what people again, expect Israel to do. Again, How can they show proportion? Okay. And I certainly, I, I, you know, I don't think Israeli mums and dads should worry about their children being abducted and murdered. 
And I don't think Palestinian mums and dads should worry about their children on a beach losing their lives. Totally true. Right? Yeah. So there's yeah. that. We're, we're um, about and so the, left, so. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of Israel, yeah, yeah, Israel shouldn't have to live under that that state of siege. But Palestinians also, their lives and the way they live their lives because of the way it's all shut down is an issue as well. But the bad guys are Hamas. We've got to wrap it up. But yeah, agree. Craig Laundy, Sean Kelly, Miranda Devine at Thank you all for the chat and uh, appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you for your company.